The test is in four part, part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4. Now look at part 1. Part 1 You will hear a parent discussing his son's school report with his tutor. Listen and fill in the missing information in the report below. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Good evening, Mr. Jameson. Please sit down. Uh, good evening. Uh, now, about my son Stephen's report. Yes, just a minute. Yes, now... What class is he in? Oh, yes, 4E. No, no, 4A, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Has he improved this year, Mrs Hargreaves? Yes, I think overall, yes. Mind you, there is still room for more improvement in some subjects. Let's see. Maths. Well, the major problem here seems to be his algebra. Apart from that, he's doing much better. Could you help him with this, Mr. Jameson? Well, to be honest, it wasn't really my best subject at school either. But the overall exam result was encouraging. 60%. Yes, and history. I seem to remember a bad report for this last year. Well, he lacks concentration in the class, and of course this makes it difficult to remember things like dates and names, and a memory is quite useful in a subject like this. Oh dear. Well, I'll have a word with him when I get home and see what we can do to improve that. And music. Music, yes. Is he still having guitar lessons? Yes, every Monday after school. His music teacher has commented that he doesn't seem to be taking them very seriously. I think it was just a craze he had, Mrs Hargreaves. I've noticed that he hasn't been very interested in practising at home. And also, he tends to talk a lot in class. I mean, he's very talkative. And he only got 40% in the exam. Well, nobody in our family is very musical, so I don't expect him to do very well. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. Looking at his geography result, though, there has been considerable improvement, 64%. Yes, I remember him working at home a lot for some sort of project or something on... Uh, now, where was it? India, I think. No, uh, on China. Yes, yes. And it was an excellent piece of work. I saw it myself and was very impressed. And his art classes have also been going better this year. Yes, he became very interested in pop art after the school and went to the local art gallery to see the pictures there. His bedroom wall is covered with posters from the shop. Yes, and 58% is not bad for his exam result, considering how low it was last year. And now French. It seems that he has really taken to speaking a foreign language. We hoped he would, because it's important to know another language these days, isn't it? Yes, quite. That's why we paid for him to go to France last Easter, so he could practice more. Well, it seems to have done the trick. 80% is a very good mark. Now, Mrs Hargreaves, I'd just like to ask you one more thing about...
That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear someone giving instructions to staff at a festival. First, look at questions eleven to thirteen. As you listen to the first part of the interview, good morning, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the Castle Pop Festival. My name is Sandy, and I'm the general manager of Castle Pop Entertainments. And I just want to take a few moments to mention a few things to you before you go and have your detailed briefings in your work groups.、Uh, you all have a copy of the plan of the festival grounds. Now, most things are obvious, but I'd like to point out first. The visitor toilets here, along the side of the main area. Kindly do not use these yourselves. Your own facilities, the staff toilets, are beside the breakfast tent. Also, there are public telephones behind the stage. I mention these two things because they are places that visitors often ask for. For yourselves, one of the most important places is the staff meeting point. This is new this year, and the only thing to remember is that it exists, and that when you refer to a meeting point between yourselves, you need to make clear which one you are talking about. The staff meeting point is between campsite one and the disabled viewing area. This is not marked on the general maps, but it is marked on the maps you've got there. The visitors' meeting point is, as you can see. In the center of the main area, between the breakfast tent and the entrance. Now, another important facility is the first aid tent. This is a big round tent, so you can't miss it. It's on the right-hand side of the entrance. Again, as you come in, there are many other first aid facilities all over the festival site. In fact. There is a first aid box in every tent and sales point, but this is the central point. Finally, I wanted to mention the security on the site. Every year the festival gets bigger and bigger, and so every year we have to increase the security arrangements. We have a number of small security offices, one being near the entrance, but the main security office is opposite the disabled viewing area. It's next to the Old England pub, so that the officers can keep an eye on what's going on there. And of course, in that office, there is a full supply of first aid equipment too. And don't forget, those of you who can't wait till you get your pay at the end of the festival, there are some cash machines in the wall of the Old England pub. Now look at questions fourteen to twenty. As the interview continues, complete the sentences. I do hope you will enjoy working with us this year. It's always good to see some of last year's faces back with us again. We hope this year to put on an even better festival than before. 
The first year we put on a festival, we called it the Mountain View Pop Concert. And it was a pop concert rather than a festival. We held it inside the castle and you could see the mountains in the background. It was very small and personal. Then we held it in front of the castle with the castle in the background and then we started calling it the Castle Festival. Now, this year, we have moved further away into the fields. The advantage is that the castle and the mountains are both there in the distance, but we have as much space as we want in the fields. The only problem with the fields is that sheep use the fields during the spring months and they leave little messages for us all over the place. So please be careful and encourage the visitors to be careful too. Now, it just remains for me to let you know the times of your detailed briefings, which are as follows, and I'm telling you these as they are not, I repeat, not as written down on your welcome letters. Those of you who are working on the children's zone, your meeting is at 2pm in Campsite 2. Those of you on the security team need to meet behind the stage at 3.15 p.m. For the people on first aid, please do not meet in the first aid tent. There will not be enough room. But meet at the entrance gates at 4 p.m. Finally, we need everybody, and I do mean everybody, on duty on Monday morning at 8 a.m. for the final clean-up. I'd like to remind you that Monday is the final day of work, not the Sunday. People not coming to the final day will lose 50% of their pay. The meeting place for that is Campsite 1. Now, good luck and let's make this the best festival ever! That is the end of part 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. Look at this advertisement for a job. Listen to Philip and Anne talking about the job and fill in the missing words. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Look, here's one that might interest you. What is it? Are you sure? The last one you sent me off to was a disaster. Yes, look. It says they want a junior sales manager and it looks like it's a big international company. That'd be good. You might get to travel. What kind of company is it, though? Let's see. Yes, it's a textile company that seems to import from abroad. That's odd, isn't it? What else? They say the salary is really good. They operate a system of paying you a basic salary and then offering sales commission on top of that. They say it's high. And, oh, look, they give you a car to travel around in. Gosh, that's not bad, is it? Uh, uh, do they say anything about experience? Mm, let's see. No, they want someone young with ambition and enthusiasm. Oh yes, they want graduates, so that's okay. You've been to university. Now what else? Let's see. There must be some catch. No, 
The only thing is, you have to travel. But then, that's what the company car's for. Oh, and you have to be able to get on well with other people, because it says you have to be good in a team. Um, perhaps I'll have a closer look at that one. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Now, could you tell us more about what you do in your department? I mean, what research are you actually doing at the moment? We're trying to find out as much as we can about dreams. There's one area that we're particularly interested in at the moment, and that is what we call directed dreaming. Directed dreaming. What is that exactly? Let me explain. You know, sometimes, if you're having a dream and you wake up in the middle of it, you can sometimes go back to sleep again and go back to the dream. Yes. Well, that is similar to what we call directed dreaming. Now, what I was talking about is a fairly common experience. But real directed dreamers are people who have always complete control over what they dream because they actually know what they're dreaming. Uh, they can dream what they want? Yes, nearly. Can anyone develop this ability? Well, that's one of the things that we would like to find out. At our centre, we have in fact got three people who are very reliable and who can have these directed dreams quite regularly. And what sort of experiments do you do with them? Well, a few weeks ago, we thought it would be interesting to see if there was any way that these three regular dreamers could communicate with each other in a directed dream while they were sleeping. So one night, we arranged for them all to stay at the centre. Then we asked the three of them, uh, there were two men and a woman, we asked them all, to go to a pub that they all knew quite well, down by the river, and ask them, if they started dreaming, to go down there and try to find each other. In the dream? Or three dreams? Yes. So, they all went off to sleep, and the next morning we interviewed them all separately and asked them what they had seen. The two men had had dreams and could remember them, and they both said that they had been to the pub and had seen each other and had had a talk. But also, both of them said that they hadn't seen the woman, and we thought that was a bit, mm, a bit odd. And then we talked to her, and she told us that she hadn't had a dream at all that night, or she couldn't remember it anyway. Fascinating. So both of the men said she hadn't appeared in their dreams, and that was because she hadn't in fact been dreaming. Yes, though of course it could just be a coincidence. But that's the kind of thing that we're trying to find out more about. Well, thank you very much, Dr Border. It's been fascinating talking to you. Thank you. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. Four. You will hear an extract from an introductory talk given to a group of students who have just entered a university residential college. The speaker is the principal of the college. 
Listen to what the speaker says and answer questions. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning and welcome to Scholastic House. I'm delighted to see you here. It is my duty to explain to you some of the history of our college and some of the traditions which I hope you will uphold. The idea for Scholastic House was expounded by Samuel Wells in 1898. Wells was a visionary whose ideas were well ahead of his time. He wanted a college which would encourage friendship between people of different races and nationalities. Wells died in 1900 before he could see the college in action. Scholastic House finally began operating in 1903 with 10 students. Those students came from Asia, Europe and the Americas. At that time, Scholastic House accepted only male students, although it has been co-educational since 1963. Nine of these foundation students went on to lead illustrious lives. The only exception died tragically on his way home from Scholastic House to Sarawak. He had only recently graduated with an honours degree in law, and he was robbed of a brilliant future. The other nine students, as I said, led very fulfilling lives. Three became political leaders, three became doctors. Perhaps the most famous graduate became a university teacher and was responsible for the introduction of modern teaching training methods in his country. Two of the original group became senior engineers and went on to deeply influence the way the water systems of their country were exploited. The college ran into hard times during the period of the Great War, 1914 to 1918, when the charter of the college was interpreted to mean that neither students nor staff could take part in the war effort. Many people felt that this indicated a lack of national spirit and the walls of the college were frequently marked with graffiti. Meantime, outside the college, tens of thousands of young men went away to fight in Europe, never to return. The college was building a reputation for learning and for tolerance of opposing views. Scholastic House debate and discussion nights were open to the public in 1927 and have been available to anyone who wishes to attend ever since. It is a proud tradition of the college that any view may be expressed, provided that it can be defended intellectually. Over the years, topics which were controversial at the time have been discussed and debated. Why should we do this? The publicity we receive is often sensational, and there is no joy in encouraging argument for its own sake. In fact, that sort of discussion just increases tension. The only legitimate reason for our behaviour is that it casts light upon the topic in question and informs the debate. And controversial topics are the ones which most need informed attention. As the world forges ahead, we often find our scientists have outstripped our philosophers. We frequently develop scientific marvels without realising their full implications. Nowhere is this more obvious than in medicine. We are now able to keep people alive far longer than before. But this medical ability must be measured in relation to the quality of those lives. I urge you to spend your time at Scholastic House wisely. You are the heirs of an excellent academic tradition of which we can all be justly proud. It is your responsibility to continue this tradition of querying where our world is going. Progress is not always upwards. I wish you every joy in your time here and I hope that I will hear much well-informed debate from you. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
That is the end of the test. You now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to your IELTS listening answer sheet. <laughs>